Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thank you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and check out my other videos. If you're here for a second or third or fourth painting, thank you so much for coming back and I look forward to seeing what you guys paint. So today's video is perfect for my first time painters. These are great videos to just kind of get you comfortable with the brush, comfortable with mixing your paint, and the kind of the way these are set up, you're going to do kind of a crazy abstract background. You are welcome to switch out colors if you want. Um, and then we'll use black paint and put a silhouette design on there. Um, and that kind of solidifies your composition. So again, this is excellent practice just to get comfortable with the process of painting and perfect for my first time and beginner painters. If you want to do a different silhouette design, um, just Google uh, the subject matter and silhouette of what do you want to do and feel free to switch it up and make the painting your own. Use this as just kind of a, a guideline, a step-by-step -step of what to do. Um, with that being said, in the description box below, you're going to see a link to a supply kit and in that supply kit is everything that you need to grab um, materials, paints, brushes, canvas for this particular painting. So check out the supply kit, grab the materials that you need, and then pick up the video again. With practice, you get better and more comfortable. So keep on finding ways to have a creative outlet on a monthly basis. Your future self will be very grateful that you did. So uh, I think it's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. All right, guys, this is going to be a fun painting and perfect for my first time painters. So make sure you get all your supplies, turn on your favorite music, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. All right, so with this one, we're going to be painting a sunset background. And we're going to start with our lightest colors first and work towards our warmer, darker colors. So using that medium flat brush, I'm going to do a combo of white and yellow. And going pretty light, um, you can make the mixture to your desired color, but just kind of mixing that. And as you apply your brush strokes, there's three brush strokes I want you to try. That full width, sideways brush stroke, and making X marks. I want you to try all three of them, and whichever one that you find the most comfortable, stick with that. You're just getting comfortable with your tools and mixing paint. So we're going to kind of create kind of a half dome, a half circle on the bottom here. And you can see where I kind of put that lemony yellow white. And if you need to mix your color a second or third time, it doesn't have to match exactly, just somewhere within this range of the shade. And here you can kind of start to see that half circle going from corner to corner. And if you're one of my first time painters, I do want you to apply your paint a little bit thicker than you may be comfortable with. When you apply your paint thicker, it's gonna stay wet for a little bit longer and it gives you a little bit more workability time to do some blending as we go into the next color. And here you can see I grabbed some more of that white and slapped it right on top of that lemony yellow. And then I'm kind of moving the brush on top of it and mixing it into that lemony yellow color. This is what we call wet on wet blending. And you can do this, we're gonna kind of practice this method as we move forward with each step for our background. All right, so now we're grabbing a little bit of that yellow and just kind of going over the perimeter on the edge of this light lemony yellow color we just applied. And you will notice that you will overlap that lemony yellow and just like adding the white earlier, that lemony yellow and the yellow you can mix together because both sections should still be wet paint. You can even use your fingers to mix a little bit if you like, um, but you're just gonna be building from your light colors out to your darker colors. All right, and now we're gonna add a touch of orange to that yellow and white mixture, and this kind of creates a sherbety orange color. And again, we're going to be putting this on the perimeter of the yellow we just applied. Again, with some of these colors overlapping and doing a little bit of blending while your paint is wet. You're doing a great job. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. 
So go ahead, pause the video, take your progress photo. And now we're gonna go with more of just that straight orange, making it a little bit darker. And again, like I said, we're just working our weights from our light colors into darker. And still kind of doing a mixture of the yellow and orange or just straight orange, but you're just going a little bit darker than what you painted. And I do want you to do these kind of quick so that way uh, your paint is wet as you go from one color to the next so you can do some of that blending. And the more that you paint, the more that you practice, the more comfortable this is going to get. Remember to breathe. A lot of times my first time painters are holding your breath. It is not to your benefit to do that. So take a deep inhale right now and just smile at yourself. You are focusing on painting. You are focused on the canvas in front of you and hopefully you're forgetting about the world outside of the four walls that you're in. And you're just zoning out to the process of painting. All right, so now we're gonna add some red orange to our combo or to our color. And again, just applying it, overlapping a little bit from our prior color and blending it as we get to the edges of the canvas. And if you choose to paint this a second or third time, please keep in mind that you are welcome. You can switch out colors. If you want more blues and purples or a blue sky background, you can switch out your colors and still go through this painting process for this video, or really any of my silhouette videos, you can switch out your colors. So now we're just at the straight red, filling up the rest of that space on the canvas at the top. If you'd like to add purple or blue to yours, um, go right ahead and add whatever color you want. If you are painting a stretched canvas, um, take this color and carry it over the sides of that canvas. It looks nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. And another good place to pause the video and take your progress photo. Anything you want to do to your background, do it while it is wet before you move into the next step. And that means even if you want to go back to your orange or your yellow or your yellow orange, do anything to your background while it is still wet. And then you do want to let it dry before we move on to our silhouette image. Nice. Here you can see I'm going back to the yellow, making it a little bit more intense. And here you can see I cleaned the brush off and using just a little bit of water, going back to doing a little bit of blending so that is an option you can try. Just make sure that your brush is never dripping wet with water. That will cause some extra problems that you don't want to deal with. So a little bit of water will help with some blending. There we go, throwing a bit more white on top of that. And the more that you paint, the more that you kind of mix your colors or throw different colors on top of there, your brain's learning each time that you do that going, oh, this is what happens with these two colors. This is what happens here. So keep on painting and don't stop in the middle. Finish your painting and then kind of reassess as needed. But painting's never about being perfect, but doing a little bit better than the last time that you painted and just kind of improving upon your skills. And remember to breathe, you're doing great. I'm so proud of you for painting at home. And for my first time painters, this is just the beginning. Um, after you get comfortable with the process, you'll be stepping up and trying other videos and more difficult compositions. All right. So All right, so go ahead, pause the video, take your progress photo. And before we move into the next step, you do wanna make sure that your background is completely dry. So give it about 10 to 15 minutes to dry uh, before you move into painting with black. And when you move into painting with black, we're gonna kinda of put our horizon line, um, our ground on there. And it doesn't have to be, um, a huge ground, you know, maybe a half inch from the bottom of the canvas. It can be a little bit more if you choose to, but you're going to kind of just put that line 
go right across the bottom of your canvas. Doesn't have to be a straight line. And then you're gonna fill in that space with black paint. And again, if you're using student grade paint, apply your paint a little bit thicker. Um, so that way it'll be a little bit more opaque and fuller coverage. Again, remember to breathe. You're doing a great job. The process of moving paint on your canvas is very therapeutic. All right, so now we're gonna draw our giraffe. And I do recommend kind of watching this and noticing the shapes that I use. <clears throat> and then I want you to practice this with your brush and black paint on a scrap sheet of paper and then move to your canvas. The more that you practice, the better you're gonna get. So for the body of the giraffe, it's kind of that weird rectangle shape. And then for the neck, it's gonna be a longer rectangle. And for the head, again, you're just gonna observe the shape and just take it one shape at a time. There we go, so I'm making his neck just a little bit longer, then we'll put the head kind of coming out from that area, and that's almost a triangle, a curved triangle for the head of our giraffe. You're doing great, don't stress out. Each animal on this planet, just like humans, is an individual and unique unto themselves. So however your giraffe turns out today, that's just your giraffe for today. And you may notice that as you kind of doodle this, kind of paint it on there, you may start drawing giraffes or doodling um, the more that you draw it. Yeah, we'll cut that out. All right, and kind of once you have your basic shape on there, you're gonna fill it in with black paint. And you can kind of readjust any of the perimeter if you need to. We're gonna be adding legs to our giraffe in a minute. And remember, you're doing a great job. So for the legs, I'm still using that small pointy brush and just kind of using the width of the brush to make each leg. For those back legs, there's a bit of a triangle there on the bottom and then the legs that kind of shoot down. And apparently it looks like I'm drawing a baby giraffe because he is rather short. If you happen to have a super tall giraffe or a short giraffe, that's okay, that's just your giraffe for today. When you paint it a second or third time, um, you'll, you're learning from this one and you may paint it a little bit differently the next time. And don't forget the little tail, it's a cute little tail. And then they also have ears and horns. And the horn is basically um, a line with a little dot at the end and then a further away ear, and then a closer ear, and it's kind of a little oval shape. Again, you can pause the video, take your progress picture, study it on um, the screen for a minute, and again, I want you to practice this with the brush and black paint on a scrap sheet of paper, and then go to your canvas and do it again. All right, now we're actually gonna put the tree in, and we're starting with the tree trunk. And this tree is kind of on the edge, so part of his branches will be going off the edge of the canvas. But you're gonna start with the tree trunk, then we're gonna put branches in there. Then we'll move up to the other brush and put our foliage on our tree. Remember to breathe, you're doing a great job. And keep in mind that while you're painting, you're about two feet in front of your canvas. So I do recommend that maybe you prop your canvas up and I want you to look at your painting from about three to 10 feet away. And from that distance, that's the normal viewing distance for most things in life, for most artwork. And it does look different from that distance compared to two feet in front of your face. So I do want you to get in the habit of looking at your artwork from that distance. All right, so pause the video, take a progress picture. And we're going to move on to the foliage. So we're getting that medium flat brush and black paint and kind of doing a tapping, almost a pointillism method for the foliage. And your tree can be as full or as fluffy um, of foliage as you want. Or it could just be more um, maybe a tree in winter and there's not that much foliage or leaves on there. 
totally your call. But after you do a little bit, look at your painting from that distance. Maybe you want to add a little more. Maybe you need to adjust and then go back and adjust what you need your painting to be. I'm really proud of you. You're doing a great job. You're painting at home. And hopefully it's not as scary now as it was earlier. And to all my students, I encourage that you try to find a creative outlet on a monthly or even weekly basis for yourself because our world is not getting any less stressful and it is up to you to kind of find your creative outlets. If you have any canvas showing through, um, go back with your black paint, fill that in, cover it up, apply your paint a little bit thicker. Uh, all right. Pause the video, take your progress picture, and we're going back to that pointy brush, and we're going to start putting a little bit of grass on the, um, on the ground, on the edges of the canvas. So starting on the ground and just using a kind of a dash mark or a flick mark moving up, we're going to be adding, kind of breaking up that uh, solid horizon line with some foliage and some grass on the bottom. And just like the tree, you can have a lot of grass, no grass, or just a little bit of grass on your painting. Again, this is your painting. Make it to what you want. And this is just your moment in time for creating for today. It's looking good. Again, I'm just so proud of you for painting at home and stepping outside your comfort zone. All right, looking good. Thanks so much for painting with me. I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you feel a little more relaxed now at the end of painting compared to when you started. I'm really, really, really proud of you for painting at home. So. Uh, good job. Don't wait too long to do another painting and just kind of hone in the skills that you learned today. It will be more comfortable um, the next time that you go to paint. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me in those photos, paint with lovejoy, or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, I'm a fully solo production here, so seeing your feedback, hearing your comments, um, really kind of gives me motivation to keep making these videos and it is growing really really nicely um, when you are ready i do have something that you can kind of uh, level up to so i want you to check out my main website paintwithlovejoy.com and i feature my paint your pet class and it is geared towards first time and beginner painters so check that out when you're ready to kind of take the next level of painting at home if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, things that you would like me to paint in the future, please leave a comment below. I do my best to respond to all of those pretty quickly. And like I said earlier, your feedback is definitely keeping me uh, going and keeping me make more videos. So it is your support that's making this happen. Um, so yeah, thanks again for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I'm honored, truly grateful that uh, you're finding a lot of help in these videos and enjoying the process of painting. So until next time, cheers. Yeah.